shame on you. Let them feel welcome. Amen. We have Holiness Apostolic Church, Elder Morrison and Gilmore and Brethren. And I think I'm Pastor Daly. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Put those hands together. Yes, 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 yes. Bless the Lord. I say no more. At this time, I'll ask Pastor Simmons to come and introduce for us the speaker so that this preacher will have enough time and at the end we'll be able to see how best we bring in those who come hungry and thirsty. Pastor Simmons congregation, God bless you in Jesus' name. shall not be moved. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All those of us who are here, if we were never touched by that song, we are dead. Oh, bless the Lord. I have really been blessed. I am blessed. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I really thank the choristers for such a lovely message in song. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I am very happy tonight to greet our presiding Bishop Watson and, of course, um, all those who are visiting with us. We have um, Elder Morrison, Elders Morrison and Gallimore from, from Holiness. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're really very happy to have them. Bishop, that's Bishop West. Okay. Bishop West is off the island. He did tell me that he would be off the island. And so that's why he's not here. But he has made the arrangement for them to be here. I'm just going, before I introduce the speaker for the night, let me just ask one of those two elders. One of those elders. You decide which one will just give a short greeting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us shout hallelujah. We shout a hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The writer David said, Oh, good. And how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in the house of God in unity. We praise the Lord. We praise the Lord. Praise God. I just want to bring greeting from my pastor and bishop, Bishop West, from the Orleans Apostolic Church, 2 to 5 Wallen Avenue, Greater Portmore. Praise God. And we are here tonight to get a word. We praise the Lord. We praise the Lord. Praise God. We just want to greet the presiding bishops here today and all the ministers, beautiful choir saints. We greet you in the most exalted name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. We are here tonight to lift up your hands. We praise the Lord. We praise the Lord. Shout a hallelujah. Sama kato shayamasa. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. We have been, for those persons who may not have known, we, our area, right? We are having the, what, the state of emergency, right? And so you must have passed the Zozo persons out in the area there, right? And they have asked us to dismiss by nine. 
right? And so that's the reason why some persons who came in not long ago, we had to start early because, um, because of that. And so tonight we have with us Pastor Philip Daly from Praise the Sanctuary. Now, this is uh, when he starts to pray. And you can feel his prayer. Amen. Oh my God. When we meet at fast fellowship, oh, he has been a source of blessing. Oh, praise the Lord. And so we are very happy to have him to minister to us tonight. Oh, praise the Lord. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you. God bless you. Bless you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lift your hand and worship the Lord everywhere. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you. We all we worship you. Hallelujah. Turn with me in your Bibles quickly. As I'm conscious that time is really against us for Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 32. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 32. We're going to be reading from verse 23. Finally say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's read together to the glory of the Lord. And they came in and possessed it, but they obeyed not the voice, neither walked in thy way. They have done nothing of all that thou commandest them to do. Therefore, thou hast caused all this evil to come upon them. Behold the mounts, they are come unto the city to take it. And the city is given into the hand of the Chaldeans that fight against it because of the sword and of the famine and of the pestilence and what thou hast spoken is come to pass behold thou seest it and thou hast said unto me O Lord God buy thee the field for money and take witnesses for the city is given into the hand of the Chaldeans then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah saying behold I am the Lord the God of all flesh is there anything too hard for me behold I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Can we lift our hands and worship? Hallelujah! 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 Ah, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah, the Lord bless you. You may be seated. I take this humble privilege in greeting the household of faith. Amen. Let me really apologize. I was waiting on the other saints to come. 
I did not know you were in a state of emergency. And um, I thank God that we were able to reach here in time. <laughs> what a God. Hallelujah. Let me greet Bishop Watson. Greetings in the precious name of Jesus to Pastor Simpson, Simmons, sorry, sorry. Pastor Simmons and to all the leaders here, amen. To all my very good friends, God bless you all. Amen, I would, it would seize me to call the names. Praise the Lord to all the beautiful choir, to the lovely saints and visitors. Amen, to those that came along with me from Praise Sanctuary. Greetings in the precious name of Jesus Christ. God bless you all, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Your theme is saying Pentecost can be repeated. Amen. It's speaking to the possibility that Pentecost can be repeated. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can I hear a praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout a hallelujah. Mighty God, give God the glory in the house today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I came tonight to speak on the subject, state your claim. State your claim. To make a claim is to declare something or to own something before it actually is handed to you. To, to, to make a statement of declaration that this thing is mine even before it was given to you. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Some people have to wait until it actually comes into their hands before they start to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, but God, the principle of the kingdom teaches, as God told Israel to march around Jericho. He didn't tell them to wait until the wall fall down. He tell them to shout. Hallelujah, at the seventh time, shout. Somebody says, shout for what? Because the wall encompass the city and there is no way we can enter the city. But the principle of the kingdom declare, you shout before the wall fall. You don't wait till the wall fall before you start to shout. Come on somebody. And so some people will see you shouting and rejoicing and wonder what in the world is he making this much ado about and he's going through his problem. But don't worry brother, sister. I know the God that I serve that there is nothing too hard. Anybody know you serve a God that uh, there is nothing too hard? Lord God Almighty, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. scripture looking into the background of the scripture amen just to give a little explanation as to the whole background behind the scenery why God had to remind Israel or Judah and say to Judah is there anything too hard for me hallelujah you see the, ch the children of Judah, amen, they had gone into idolatry. They had backslidden. 
they had seen what the Assyrians did. At this time, the two kingdoms were split in two. There was the northern kingdom, which was the kingdom of Israel, the ten tribes. And there was the southern kingdom, the kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. It was called the southern kingdom. And the Bible tells me that because of disobedience and rebellion, God allowed the Assyrians to overtake the northern kingdom and utterly destroy them and dis ah, disinherit them and drove them out of the land and possessed the land in their stead. And so Judah saw what the Assyrians did to the northern kingdom and God sent prophets to Judah and said to them you have seen what I've done to your bigger sister you have seen what I've done to the to the northern kingdom take heed if you don't repent I'm gonna do the same thing unto you and God sent them prophets uh, warning Judah not to follow in the footstep of the northern kingdom but they were to take heed and so here comes a prophet by the name of Jeremiah and Jeremiah lived in a time where idolatry went to its heights amen there was a king called Jehoiakim the Bible said he took idolatry to a new heights he caused the children to pass through the fire he offered up all oblations unto idols he tore down hallelujah the temple of God and he built him high places where they could worship unto their groves and unto their idols and Jeremiah rose up in a time like this and he began to weep over the condition of Israel of Judah and the Bible tell me that after Jehoiakim there came a king by the name of Zedekiah and Zedekiah did evil exceedingly hallelujah and God caused the Chaldeans amen the Chaldeans to come in and take the land hallelujah and begin to drive them into captivity and the Bible tell me that Zedekiah he wanted to be free from the bondage of the Chaldeans he wanted to be free from the captivity of the Babylonians and he saw Sought to send to Egypt and say to Egypt, let's make a league. Maybe if we could join forces together, we could overthrow the Chaldeans. And the Bible tell me that Jeremiah got a word from God to say to Zedekiah, thus said the Lord God, you should not seek a acquaintance with the heathen you should not turn to Egypt for help hallelujah because Egypt are men and they are not gods they can't help you can I talk to some child of God that is turning to some Egyptian sources hallelujah turning to strange sources for help some people even look into Danman to solve their own problem. Come on, Dan men are men. They are not gods. Come on, people are turning to Obia and to witchcraft and to all kind of astrology and to all kind of evil source seeking for help. But if God can't help you, no 
nobody else can. Somebody said, they that wait upon the Lord. Come on, tell your neighbor, hang on. Hallelujah, Jesus is about to come and help you. It may seem long. Somebody said he may not come when you want him, but he's going to be there right on time. He might be four days late, but he's still on time. Can I get a witness in the house? Hallelujah. For hallelujah, for weeping may endure for a night, but joy, somebody praise the Lord, hallelujah, Jeremiah said, hallelujah, the Egyptians will not be able to help you, thus said the Lord, because of your iniquity, have allowed the enemies to come in and take your land but the Lord said if you will turn to me with all your hearts I will hearten unto you but the Bible said the king Zedekiah he would not yield to the word of Jeremiah and there was a false prophet by the name of Zachariah that came up and slapped Jeremiah in the face and say you naughty boy who dare you talk to the king like that and the Bible said they took Jeremiah and they scolded him and threw him into a pit filled with garbage filled with waste matters and when Jeremiah saw the condition he said he would not preach any more in the name of the Lord and the Bible tell me but his words was in me said Jeremiah like fire shut up hallelujah he felt like giving up but the words were like fire shut up within his bones the Bible tell me that when the time came they took Jeremiah out of the pit and they threatened him to kill him and Jeremiah had to run for refuge to the borders of Egypt and so he was among the refugees while the Chaldeans begin to form their army to come against Judah who was combined with with Egypt uh, to fight against the Chaldeans uh, and the Bible tell me uh, that the Chaldeans overthrew uh, the, Ju the, the Judahists uh, are in the kingdom of Judah uh, and utterly destroy their strong men uh, and begin to take the land uh, and the people ran for their lives and some of the people went to Jeremiah and they said Jeremiah the words that you prophesy was true what you said was true we did not listen to you we should have taken heed unto your words and the Bible tell me that Jeremiah said to them fear not for the Lord said I'm going to allow you to go into captivity for 70 years but I'm going to bring you back into your land because of the covenant I have made with David I will not utterly drive you out I'm going to bring you back into your homeland and the Bible said the kingdom are the children of Judah they could not believe that God could do what he said they could not believe 
that God could ever bring them back because of the size of the Chaldean's army. The Chaldean's army, they looked impregnable. They looked invincible. They looked unconquerable. They looked impossible. And the children of Judah begin to sell out their lands for little and nothing. They began to give up their possession. And Jeremiah told them, don't sell out. Hold on to your title. Because God is about to bring you back into your land. Don't give up your land. Hang on to your title. Jeremiah said, as a matter of fact, if your brother is selling, buy the land and keep your title. Because when God brings you back, you're going to need your title to claim your land. Oh, praise the Lord. But the children of Judah could not believe that God was able to bring them back. I heard the psalmist said by the rivers of Babylon there we sat down and there we wept when we remember Zion but the wicked which carried us away captivity required from us a song but the children of Judah said how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land they hung up their harps on the willow and said there is no hope for me to come back but I came by the Lord God Almighty said to the children of Judah thus said the Lord I am the Lord the God of all flesh is there anything too hard oh glory to God hallelujah I could have preached when God asks a question when God asks a question he already knows the answer. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, when God asks a question, He's not seeking the answer because God is already the answer. So what God wants to prove to you is that He is the answer to your question. Oh praise the Lord. So when God says, Is there anything too hard for me? He already know you can't question God because his ability, his character stands unquestioned throughout all the ages. He has done marvelous things. So how can you ask, Lord, is there anything too hard? I came by the Philip Road to tell somebody, state your claim. Hallelujah. What Jeremiah was saying, begin to tell Israel, I'm coming back. I shall return. I've been through some battle. I've been through some struggles. Sometimes people question my character. Sometimes people question my anointing. Sometimes people even ask, where is your shout? But I come by to tell somebody, I'm coming 
back to my place of anointing. I'm coming back with power. I'm coming back with authority. I'm going to take back my place in God. I command every devil that has stolen from me. I come back to take what the enemy has stolen. Like Judah, I come back to tell you that I serve a God that there is nothing impossible with him and he's able to see me through though the devil may buffet me though the dragon may seem to trample me I shall rise I'm gonna get up I feel somebody is about to rise in their spirit in the name of Jesus you might as well look the devil in the eye and say I'm not going under I'm coming over I shall not die but I shall live tell somebody I'm not giving up I'm not throwing in the towel I'm gonna make it because my God is the God of the impossible can I hear somebody lift your hand hallelujah state your claim tell your neighbor I'm gonna be victorious I'm gonna be victorious no devil in hell is gonna stop me Lord could I feel a worship in the house somebody is about to shout because your victory is already won in the name of Jesus I command your Satan in the name of the Lord pack your weapon and flee for the Lord has given us a karate I'm gonna war anybody wanna war for your victory anybody wanna lift your hand and all oh, glory begin to shout The thing about stating your claim, a lot of people are afraid to speak their faith. It's easier to speak your problem than to state your faith. I saw some people, you meet them, they'll tell you the world about their problem. But after listening for hours, you wonder where is their God? To state your claim is to look the devil in the face of adversity and tell the devil, no matter what you throw at me, no matter what you come with, I shall not be defeated. Somebody ought to look the devil and said, I'm not going to backslide. No devil in hell is going to root me out of my place. Come on, dragon, with all that you want to try. I've made up in my mind that comes what may. 
I'm gonna be victorious. Somebody might as well look at your neighbor and said, I am healed. I'm gonna state my claim. You know my situation. You know what I've been through. But I'm not about to tell you about my problem. I'm about to tell you about my God. I know, I know that God is gonna see me through. Somebody, you're worrying about your bills, but you might as well begin to rejoice because God said, is there anything to hard? I'm able to do exceeding abundantly above all. Anybody want to lift your voice and speak your victory, speak your deliverance, speak your anointing, speak your power. I'm about to step into a new season. I'm about to step in my anointing. Pentecost is about to be repeated. I don't care what kind of dragon that may stand in my way. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. My victory is coming. My revival is coming. My anointing. State your claim. Lift your hand. Begin to rejoice for the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. He had prevailed. Can I hear a shout? Can I hear a Somebody praise God. Somebody give God the glory. A lot of people say that Jonah was disobedient. The problem with Jonah in the time when Jonah was a prophet, it was declared in Israel that any prophet prophesied something and it did not come to pass that prophet should be killed uh -huh. so Jonah was facing a death center because what he was saying he said Lord I'm afraid that when I go to Nineveh and tell Nineveh 